afternoon. Before we ask you uh, the more important questions, I think let's ask you the most important question. How are your children? My two sons are presently at preschool and the older one's looking forward to kindergarten. So I have to contend with PTA meetings and things, but they're all right. How about your own music uh, studies? How has that been? I have been at school trying to pursue the same career that I always loved, but um, these past six months have been a little bit too turbulent for me to continue, so I had to drop out for a while. Do your two sons uh, know or are they aware of what's happening to their Lolo and Lola? Oh, absolutely. They've been visiting with me here at Hawaii occasionally, but um, of course they, they haven't seen their Lolo in more than six months, I think, since he's been at the hospital. And they continue to pray for him because they see me disappearing every few, every few weeks whenever he gets very critical. I have to come over here and um, take care of both my father and my mother, who needs a lot of company. How about Greggy? How, how has he been? Um, you know, is he worried about his business at home? or How is he taking all of this? Well, he's having to contend with quite a few problems at this point, but, well, all he really wants to do is have what's rightfully his return to him. Um, none of his business has ever had anything to do with our family. And a lot of it goes way beyond the history of mine, so <laughs> that's all he's really hoping for. Okay, turning on to something a little bit more serious. Um, what can you say about the uh, decision of the Aquino administration to continue to uh, prevent the return of your father, whether dead or alive? Of course, I think it's a little rash, but um, I like to think there's room for a change in mind and opinion. We still pray for that, of course. Well, do you really think that there's still hope that the uh, Aquino administration, principally uh, Cory Aquino, might change its position and allow your father to return to the Philippines? We're playing for enlightenment at this time. Um, that's the only thing we can do, I think. She's said it so many times and repeated it over and over again, so I really don't know what else could do it but prayer. How about you, yourself, your, your, your innermost feeling? Um, do you really want to go home to the Philippines? How badly do you want to go home? Oh, terribly. Um, well, I was sent to school away, knowing what I had missed in the Philippines. And now that I'm adult and actually bringing up a family, I still want to bring them up as Filipinos, having seen many other different, you know, cultures. But um, I myself consider it home like I should. After all, my father's commitment was not only for himself, but for his whole family. And I don't know how to live anywhere else, actually. Um, since remember that my father became president when I was five years old. So I don't know anything else, but to think of the Filipino people and to serve. Although I'm not a very public person, I still think I can be of some help to the Philippines. You are the baby of the Marcos family, uh, after all. Uh, how has all of this, uh, you know, affected you? How, how have you really been uh, affected by the turn of event events, both politically and uh, in terms of the uh, physical situation of your dad? Um, of course, at this point, I have children, which despite the fact, you know, whether I was here or in the Philippines, I would have had to grow up, as you can say. But um, more importantly at this point, I think, is that my father is not well, and the, us children have to take it into our hands quite a bit. We have to take care of my mother more. She. She has up to this, up till his sickness, always relied on him, and so we have to help her out, be it, you know, emotionally even, because now she doesn't seem, you know, without us she'd have no one to lean on. 
so we have to think of that and we have to think about being adult <laughs> which hasn't been the case I guess for a long time what are your feelings about your former friends who have stayed behind and have now started to move around in the society that they find themselves and have changed their alliances and friendships well of course you have to understand that some for some it's a matter of survival they have businesses to speak of they have other interests for those you can you can really begrudge them nothing but for those who have just thrown their loyalties out the window for other reasons I'm glad I found out now um, I'm still young enough to say that I know who my friends are and it's good to know before you're 30 don't you think well finally from the heart of Irene Marcus the youngest of the Marcus clan is there anything you would like to say to address yourself directly to the Filipino people the youth particularly uh, with regard to your situation and the return of your father to the Philippines well as you know as I said earlier um, my family's commitment to the country was made long before I was born and I grew up on the same commitment and in this light although we are so far we are across this wide ocean um, we're really at the beck and call of the Filipino people I think we can still be of some help and if we are but asked we could very well be constructive are you ready to return at any time to the Philippines? Absolutely. I can't say I'm ready to take my children and the whole, you know, with all the paraphernalia that comes with bringing families across the seas, but I'm ready re to return at the mention. Thank you very much, Irene Marcos. Ako, Ferdinand E. Marcos. Ang batak, lalawigan ng Ilocos Noro. Inihalal ang Pangulong Pilipina. Magbibigay katarungan sa bawat tao. At sa mga.